New video, we're going to be breaking down a track I just released, Quarter Clock. <laughs> Check it out below. So this tune has been doing really good. I feel like I did a lot in this tune to make it actually really cool. You should stay to the end to uh, find out. Also, if you stay to the end, I'm picking at least two people from the comments for free lessons. So if you want a free lesson, comment below. Just tell me what you learned from this video or a favorite part of it. Let's get into the tune. So to break this down, how I even got this? Say hey, I'm using my uh, my Rhythm Ultimate Plugin 2. You can get that below in the description but I'm going to break down the sound so like what I did now this sound is actually pretty easy it's just a basic square you know most rhythm these days is gonna be like a basic square uh, and I feel like that's how you get the best girth out of a sound with all the effects that you throw at it or all the processing um, I did a little bit of FM to B just to give a little more strength and then I add a little bit of combs and the 1200 <laughs> So, so nearing the drop, it, it goes to like 790. Point out here with like the movement of the sound is that the LFO is pretty tight. So the attack, it could be like this to be honest to make it even better. But I kind of just wanted to keep it like this. So something like this and something short and sweet will help you a lot with dynamics too, like pushing this type of sound into some distortion. This type of short LFO will help a lot when you're uh, trying to do sound design for distorted type tunes. I'm going to show you uh, why I made that really short so that like you can hear that the bump of the sub comes out right here. The sub really speaks off of the space. Um, you can get this below like I said if you want to really get messy around with it because I just messed with some knobs and threw stuff on automations. If, trying to, if you have this already you can automate a knob by hitting activate. I don't know why people trip up on subs. It really is just a sine wave at the end of the day. It's the best sub you're ever going to get. And then you can add harmonics with distortion or whatever you're trying to do. Like this with a long release and sustain type of thing. Um, and then let's play it just alone. So, right, but what if we did this? You'll see a different context. So, it really, at the end of the day, is how you choose to allow how much volume you're going to let through. If we went down here, you're going to see it's not even going to play. So that's enough with that. I feel like I had to explain that a little bit. And then I'm going to go into the processing a little bit. So, because it would just be unfair of me to leave out the processing. It's a bit disorganized, but... Um... It's pretty much what I explained in my last distortion thingy. I don't do really the effects like crazy stuff beforehand. Like I do have delays here and all that, but I'm not using them, right? I'm not using these delays at all. They are here though, but I normally do effects in my like effect chain. Uh, I'm very disorganized. My sub is also going to a final chain. This is also where my uh, my main sounds are going. My sound goes to this. All my all my mid basses are gonna go to this chain, right? Which are, is my effect chain, which I have like Pro R for some space. Without it, it sounds like this. you can use kilohertz conversion, which is really nice too, or you can use fruity conversion, or you can use a refurb. I like convulsion the best when it comes to uh, adding space to a sound of some sort or width, whatever you mean. I do want to explain while I'm talking about all this effect stuff is, you know, I do like to put a disperser on initially to give it a little more like girthiness, slight girthiness. It gives a nice little more like width type of thing. And then I like to give maybe sometimes a little bump if I feel like it needs it in the EQ. Uh, and I cut it off 150. Put a soft clip at the bottom. Then I go into the effect chain over here. So like any bass that I'm doing pretty much is going to this effect chain. So all the basses kind of have this glued sense to them. I was saying before. Uh, cut off again. 
uh, 170, probably just because, I don't know, I've been a, been a little safe recently. So, I do want to go to my sub. So, after my effects, it goes to a final chain. And this is also where my sub is going. And this is so I can glue my sound and my sub and mix those frequencies together. So, we get really cool, warm, harmonic, um, Outcomes we want our mid bass and our sub to almost sound like one. So this is how we do it Best explain. I do want to say that the sub is plus six. I went a little uh, Overboard on this one don't have to do that normally plus four is good for a good mix But it's whatever you choose and then I did a little bump here. I might cut it off around Almost 300 on this one now on my final my sub and my sound mute. so I'm doing another disperser and then I'm doing Decapitator. Now this is the best, I feel, tube distortion for just dubstep. Um, normally on distortion, so it's a tube distortion, normally on a, this type of process, when it comes to the final uh, drive from two to three will work and a mix from 70 to 60 uh, is normally typically going to be the perfect adjustments. I, I like the soft clipper to clip everything near the end and let it hit a ceiling, but I also really like how it sounds. On my EQ, I do cut off a lot of this stuff for range high end because I don't think we need it. And then I do a little EQ bumping just to add some stuff in that I thought I, uh, I needed more of. Overdrive saturation. This one gives it the tune the tune. <laughs> have gain to push it more here. That's my tune without loudness pushing. I have some side cut. I always do that. And then I have a soft clipper. Ooh, we're getting into the flow real quick. So, I, I feel it's really kind of straightforward. Um, Really short and uh, really short kind of bass shots or MIDI notes, whatever you want to say, sounds. Let's just say you want your sound to be kind of short. So I went for some kind of like rhythm type of thing. So mm, me, I was like, hmm, let me go like this. Do, do, do. I have these uh, cool square four sounds in the back. Part with the uh, maelstrom kind of sound and bass. So, I'm gonna break this one down. Also, made with my rhythm patch plugin. But, I'll break the sound down to a uh, wavetable that you can only get with my patcher. Cause like, there's like different positions for this one. And then I have like the LFO, kind of like this wompy type of thing, controlling the level. Kind of the same thing I was talking about earlier. With a filter on it. And some like, uh, some combs. Around the 573, really nice. Full wet. Not using the flanger, then so like EQing. It sounds actually pretty simple, and then it's it's actually being ran through the same uh, same processing as the other ones. So I already broke that down. That's all being ran through the same processing, same thing. So it's all going through the same thing. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you stay till the end, comment below what your favorite part is or what you learned. Don't give up, and remember, have fun making dubstep.